Hello again. This video is going to be about vectors and vector components, so you'll be using this a lot in Unit 1 when we talk about momentum, and you want to be comfortable with that before you go in. Uh, well, first of all, some numbers are vectors, and that means that they have a direction associated with them. So, some numbers don't have a direction. For instance, if you're talking about the number of sides on a square, the answer is 4, and that 4 doesn't really have any kind of direction associated with it. You can't have a gain of 4 or a loss of 4 or anything like that. Vectors come up when you have numbers that can go in a couple of different directions. For instance, if you look at your bank statement, you might see plus 200s where money came in, and you might see minus 200s where you spent money and it flowed out. So you can have 200s in two different directions. Some of them are good, and some of them you're a little sad to see. The same thing can happen with movement. If you're flying a plane, you could gain a thousand feet, get higher up into the sky, or you could lose a thousand feet, get closer to the ground. That's another good example where you could use a vector. And in general, when we're tracking the movement, either direction or velocity, of some object, we'll use the same signs that we used in math class when we were talking about the x and y directions. So in math we told you that horizontally speaking to the right is positive and to the left is negative. Physics uses that same convention. And vertically speaking, down is negative and up is positive. So you'll see those same signs in physics. Anytime something moves to the... if something moved two kilometers east, we'd probably call that a plus two. If it moved five kilometers west, we'd probably write minus five for the displacement. And the same if something went south or north, we'd probably call the south displacements negative and the north displacements positive. So let's play around with that concept a little bit and see what sorts of things we can do. Uh, let's say you're out hiking and you go three kilometers east and then you turn and you go two kilometers north. What's the overall effect of those two walks? Like if you had gone in a straight line from your start point to your end point, how far would that be? We call this the resultant, resultant, and it's like a total for two vectors, saying if instead of taking the corner, if you had just gone straight from your beginning to your end point, how far would you have gone and in what direction? Well, the nice thing about these vectors is that they're at right angles. East and north are at 90 degrees to each other, and that means what we're looking at here is a right triangle. In right triangles, we have Sokatoa, which we're going to use in a moment, and we also have the Pythagorean theorem. Anytime it's a right triangle, you can whip out a squared plus b squared equals c squared whenever you need it. So here we could say 3 squared plus 2 squared equals the resultant squared. There's the 3, there's the 2. The squares of those add up to the square of the resultant. 3 squared is 9 plus 2 squared is 4 equals r squared. r squared equals 13. So r is the square root of 13. Start calculator app. 13 square root. 3.61. 3.61 kilometers. So if you go 3 kilometers to the east and then 2 kilometers north, overall you're 3.61 kilometers away from your starting point. You could have gotten there. You could have saved yourself some distance if you had gone in a straight line like this. And the other thing we might want to know is what angle is that resultant at? If you're standing here where this unknown angle is, I think Sokatoa, which sides are these? We know our opposite is 2. We know our adjacent is 3. What trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Uh, 
Opposite and adjacent is O and A, so tangent can help us with this. We can write tangent theta equals the opposite side is 2 over the adjacent side is 3. Tan theta equals 2 divided by 3 is 0 0.6666666. Eventually at the end you'll round and get a 7. And if we want to know what that angle is, remember if you want to take a tangent off of something you use the inverse tangent or arc tangent. Or second tangent on some calculators. You do that on both sides, these cancel and we get theta equals the inverse tangent of 0 0.666666. So I get 33.7 degrees when I do that. If you didn't get that, make sure you're in degree mode. Some calculators come out of the box in radian mode and people don't change it for a long time. But you should get 33.7 for your direction there. And so we would say our resultant because vectors are normally supposed to have a magnitude, like a number, and a direction for it. We'd say our resultant is 3.61 kilometers at 33.7 degrees. The way we measure this is we say north of east. What that means is, if you want to be pointing in the direction of this resultant, this means face towards the east, Okay, now come 33.7 degrees towards north. And that gets you this way. Just to expand on that. If your angle's like this, we would call it north of east. If your angle's like this, this would mean face towards the east. Okay, now turn towards the south. We call that south of east. If your angle's like this, this would mean Okay, face towards the west, and now come north from there. So we call that north of west. And angles that go this way are called south of west. Which means, okay, face towards the west, now turn south a certain number of degrees until you're pointing the right way. You can't have angles that are measured off the vertical or off of north and south. We try to avoid those normally. Most of our angles we draw like reference angles. We try to keep them off the horizontal like this. All right. Let's try something else like that, see if we can do it again. What if someone goes four kilometers west and then three kilometers south, and then, uh, no, it's not good, it, nine kilometers east. Well, we've got four kilometers to the west is what we would call a minus four in the x direction. Three kilometers south we'd call minus three in the y direction, and then 9 kilometers east is back this way. When you get a situation like this, you add up all the components that are horizontal, and you, if there were more than one vertical, you would add up all of those as well. So the part, first part, which we can do easily, is say if you have a minus 4 and then a plus 9, we can mush those together into a positive 5. We can say our total in the x direction is positive 5 kilometers, meaning 5 to the east. The minus 4 and the plus 9 just added up to that. But now we have a horizontal component and a vertical component, and to combine those we have to do our Pythagorean theorem thing again. We'd have to say, all right, so we went 5 kilometers east, and then we went three kilometers south. And we want a resultant. All right, so to do your right triangle, you have to have just one total for all your horizontal stuff, one total for all your vertical stuff. And once you've done that, then the Pythagorean theorem can help. 
and it says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which for us means 5 squared plus 3 squared equals, you can use c or you can use r for resultant or x, whatever you like. 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9, equals c squared, so c squared is 34, and the square root of 34 is 5.83. So the magnitude of our resultant is 5.83 kilometers. That's, that's how far you are from your starting point if you do 5 kilometers and then take a right angle and do 3 more. If we want the angle in there, well, which sides have we got? Technically, we have all three of them, but uh, what they generally say is avoid using your 5.83 that you just found, because if you made a mistake finding this, that mistake is going to end up in your angle as well, and that's a sad thing. So if these this 5 and this 3 are givens, it's better to rely on those. Those sides are your adjacent side and your opposite side. And we're reasonably sure those numbers are good, so it's better to use those for future calculations than to build more and more stuff on your 5.83, just in case there was an error in it. This is one less thing we'll have to fix. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so it's 3 over 5. Tangent theta is 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. And if we want to take the tangent off, that and that cancel, and we get theta equals the inverse tangent or arc tangent of 0 0.6, which according to my calculator is 30.9, let's call it 31 degrees theta equals 31 degrees. Alright, so the resultant here we would say is you're 5.83 kilometers away at 31 degrees what direction is this? This is east so we're starting at east and then we're coming towards the south so we call this 31 degrees south of east or the other way they write this is sometimes they will say east 31 degrees south, which means first point your nose towards the east, now turn 31 degrees towards the south. The, those mean the same thing. I think they both make a reasonable amount of sense, but it's a little disconcerting that they're written differently. South of east means face east first, then turn it towards the south. This one means the same thing. Start facing east and then turn towards the south 31 degrees. All right. Another way that we can use this, and the way that we actually use more often in the momentum section, is sometimes you know the resultant first, and you have to break it into components. So for instance, let's say we have an object that's going, I'm making up numbers here, 16 meters per second at an angle of, what does that look like? Let's call it 28 degrees. It's going at 28 degrees north of east, 16 meters per second. Well, often we want to break that up, and if something is going north and east like this, that means it's moving to the east, and it's moving north, and sometimes we want to know what those two numbers are separately. We can break this up into an east component and a north component, and those components are at right angles to each other, so once again we have a right triangle. If this is our total velocity, we would say there's a certain amount of velocity in the x direction, which you write v subscript x, and 
there's a certain component in the y direction which we call v subscript y or just v sub y and we can find those by doing some trig we can't find both of them at once sadly but if we want this x component if we're standing here this vx is our adjacent side and the V, the 16 meters per second, is our hypotenuse. So which trig function can help us with that? Adjacent and hypotenuse is A and H. Cosine can tie those together for us. We can write cosine 28 equals the adjacent side, which is Vx, I don't know what it is yet, over the hypotenuse, which is 16 meters per second. If we want to know what Vx is, we multiply both sides by 16, multiply this by 16, and we get Vx equals 16 cosine 28, and after some calculator pounding, 28 cosine times 16, I get 14.13, 14.13 meters per second is what we call our x component or our horizontal component. So this object is moving 14.13 meters per second towards the east and it's got to be moving north at the same time so let's see how much of that there is. If we go to, let's use green, If we're trying to find Vy, this is our opposite side, because remember we're still standing over here on the 28 degree angle. And this is still our hypotenuse. So what trig function helps now? Opposite and hypotenuse is O and H. Sine is our friend for this. We can say sine 28 equals opposite over hypotenuse, so that's Vy over 16. Multiply both sides by 16, those cancel, and we get Vy equals 16 sine 28 equals... All right, so this 16 meters per second means that you're moving 14.13 to the east every second and 7.51 to the north every second. Those are your horizontal and your vertical components. Let's try that one more time with something a little meaner. I'll show you what these look like when we're actually doing them because what usually happens is we're adding a couple vectors together and they're both at various angles and there ends up being a fair bit of crunch. Let's say you start out on a trip and let's make this really awful. Alright, let's say someone's out hiking and they go, we'll start out easy, six kilometers west. Then they turn and they go four kilometers at 47 degrees south of east. Then they turn again and they go seven kilometers at 62 degrees north of east. And the question is, what is the total of all of those, or what is the resultant for all that stuff? So, we have to take each of these movements and break it into X and Y components. And that's going to involve a little bit of trig. Let's move these down a little bit. Okay. Six kilometers west is the easy one. That's just 6 in the horizontal direction, or 6 to the left. We could write that as minus 6 in the x direction, and nothing in the y direction. If you're moving due west, you're not moving north or south. 
So the x components for this one are negative 6 and 0. The other two are going to be harder. 4 kilometers at 47 degrees south of east. Let's draw that. Here's like a compass. Here's east, and we're coming 47 degrees south of east. All right, this means, south of east means face east. Now turn 47 degrees towards the south. Now you're going in the right direction. And they tell us this distance is 4 kilometers. And what we want to know is what is the x component here. We call that dx. These are distances, so dx. If it was velocities, I'd be writing vx. And we have a component here, which is dy. And we can find those if we do the right kind of trig. If we're finding dx, this would be our adjacent side. Remember, we're standing here. And this is our hypo hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse, we want cosine. Cosine 47 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 4, and we get dx equals 4 cosine 47. And it looks to me like that's 2.73. Two point seven three kilometers east. Two point seven three. Now we can do that again and get the north south displacement or the y displacement. This is the opposite side, and we still have our hypotenuse over here. Remember, we don't want to base additional stuff on this two point seven three in case it's wrong. It's better to keep coming back to the given 4. Also, it's a nice round number, which makes life a little bit easier. So here we could say opposite hypotenuse would be sine 47 equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 4, and you get dy equals 4 sine 47. Calculate that. 2.93. So dy here is 2.93. Good so far? That's the trig part. So what did we just learn? Our x component for this part of the walk was 2.73, and that's to the east, so we'd call it positive, plus 2.73. And our y component is not 2.93, negative 2.93, because it's oriented south. There are, there are some mathematical ways which I do not like to get the negative sign to come out of when you're doing the trig. I think it's better to just do that yourself. If you have a correctly labeled diagram, you can just remember to put in that negative sign if you ever have anything going to the left or down, in other words, to the west or south. This x component's to the right, so we call it positive. This y component's going south or down, so we call that one negative. So those are its two components, and we have one more to go. These questions aren't difficult, except that they're long, and there's a lot of stuff to keep neat and organized. So take your time, get everything right. It's like accounting. Easy as long as you concentrate hard and never make any mistakes. Okay, 7 kilometers at, let's start with this, 62 degrees north of east. North of east means start at east, and then come 62 degrees towards the north. So something like that. It's a bit of a wonky triangle, but we'll live with it. 62 degrees goes there, and this is 7 kilometers long. And again, we want to find displacement in the x and displacement in the y. So, if we want the x component, 
what trig function helps us here? This is the adjacent side, dx. This is the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is a and h, so ka, we want cosine. Cosine 62 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply by 7 on both sides. Cosine 62 times 7 comes out to 3.29. Three point two nine kilometers is this part. And now we get to run it again to find the y component. Uh, sorry, that's kilometers. If we're finding dy, this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse, so O and H, so we want sine sine 62 equals opposite over hypotenuse, so dy over 7. Multiply by 7 on both sides, and away we go. You might have noticed, by the way, if we always draw our angles as reference angles like this, like they're always off the horizontal, then cosine will always give you your horizontal component and sine will always give you your y component. And that's pretty great. It saves you having to think about it every time. It saves you some some time and it saves you some possibility for errors. So if you always make your angles off the horizontal, cosine gives x, sine gives y. That's the way most of the pros do it and it's not a bad thing to emulate them. Sine 62 times 7 gives me 6.18 for my y component. 6.18 kilometers. So, if we're doing components for this, the x component is 3.29 and it's to the east, so we'd call it positive. The y component is 6.18, it's to the north, so also positive. And there we go, we have them all now. Let's clear some space and we'll finish this thing up. If you're adding up x components, you just do a total. Negative 6. Sorry, on my calculator I have to hit 6 and then do the negative. Plus 273 and then plus 329. My total in the x direction, oh well, is 0 0.02. The x is cancelled out almost perfectly, and that's weird because I just made up the numbers on the spot. Okay, so positive 0 0.02. And for our y component, we have 0 and negative 293 and 6.18, which comes out to 3.25. Positive 3.25. So, overall, if this is a starting point, this person went hardly any distance to the east, 0 0.02, and then they went 3.25 kilometers to the north, so I know my scale's going to be way out of whack, but it's something like this. It really is a much greater y than the x. It's a very elongated triangle. And, let's, with the line tool, maybe I can get this line to look something like okay. This red would be our resultant. How long is it? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 0 0.02 squared, that's going to be hardly anything, plus 3.25 squared equals c squared. Yeah, it's such a small difference, it still rounds to 3.25. So our resultant is 3.25 kilometers, that's its length. And the angle, we want it off the horizontal like this, would be, well, this 3.25 is our opposite side, and the 0.02 is our adjacent side. So what trig function does opposite and adjacent? That's O and A. I hope you said tangent. 
Tangent theta is 3.25 over 0 0.02. 3.25 divided by 0 0.02 gives 162.5. So if we want just theta, we have to take the tangent off, and we do that by using inverse tangent or arc tangent. Those cancel, and we get that our angle is the second tangent of 162.5 which is, yeah, that sounds about right, 89.6 degrees. So this angle is so sharp, it's darn near a right angle. It's almost 90. It's, we would say that our displacement is 3.25 kilometers at 89.6 degrees north of east, or we could say it's east 89.6 degrees north, which is very close to due north. Okay. So when you have a lot of different vectors like this, break everything into components, and then you can work with the x's separately and the y's separately. We do that with displacements, we do it with, with velocities, and as you'll see in unit one, we also do it with the momenta. When you, when you have several different objects moving, you can take e the momentum of each object, break it into x's and y's, and then work with them separately. And it takes a little time, but not all that bad.